Hey folks, thank you for stopping by Kaiser's Castle. Um, yep, I'm glad that you guys got to hear the Star Spangled Banner. It's the 2nd of July. In two short days, we're going to have the 4th of July when our country was founded. You know, when it, everything happened, when we became a nation. The birth of a nation. And by 2026, if memory serves, we're going to have our another anniversary like the Bicentennial back in 1976. Some of you people might not have even been alive for that. And hell, I might be alive for it. Didn't think that would ever happen either. But today I'd like to talk a little bit about my hometown. First off, uh, me and my twin sister, uh, we were born on the 9th of November, 1960s, at 3.38 p.m., you know, in the afternoon at Riverside Hospital in Columbus, Ohio. The reason why I played that nice little Star Spangled Banner for you is I remember fourth of July's in Columbus as a kid not knowing what it was even the bicentennial you know at that time I was still a young kid what was I nine or ten or some shit anyways I remember they painted revolutionary figures and guess what they also put on the British who we fought and Columbus did that on every little fire um, where, where you get the water fire hydrant for people's places if it's going to catch fire they did that all around Columbus it was real patriotic here in America here's what I see now and my mother and my twin and I we'd go hang out by the state house or we'd go over to the actual um, uh, Columbus City, you know, the City Hall. And they got like, I got a picture up there. They got a little place you can sit. There's even a little green out there. <clears throat> and we used to have picnics on that, that lawn. You know, when we were real little. Now in 1950s, uh, Columbus has a sister city in Italy. There's a reason why we have Little Italy and German Village in Columbus. Because those, that's where those settlements were at. That's who mostly consisted in those little areas of Columbus. And, uh, well, in the wee dawn hours of the morning today in Columbus, not at the Capitol building, or not at the state Capitol, but at the city little Capitol area. The 22-foot gift of Columbus to the great city of Columbus. At, the, at that time it was, and it has been up until it was besmirched this morning, or yesterday morning, on the 1st of July. Um... Now, you got to remember, I'm half Dago, and I'm also half Kraut. And I had to wait a while to really think, so I didn't say things I didn't want to say. Because I'm incensed over something. The American people, I don't un think, understand that this Maoist communism and the intersectionality religion of malice communism there is no it's a spiral there is no depth to where it stops as long as the insanity goes on and it will continue for a while I've always been a voice of moderation always kept it cool and I'm still keeping it cool. Problem is, there was not even a vote 
to take it down. Not even a vote. Just a gentleman by the name of Ginther. We've had many people at, you know, that capital area is mayors. Some shit. Some decent. I remember Buck Reinhardt. Good dude. I remember Celeste. Up until this point, I would have probably have said Celeste was the worst one. I mean, we had problems with the last one where his wife kept burning down their house, you know, for reasons that people in Columbus all know about, but everybody acts like nobody knew. And we like to keep our problems our problems in Ohio. In Columbus, Columbus used to be called the largest small town in the United States of America. Bet you didn't know that. It was still called that in the 80s when I left to go serve my nation, joining the Army at 17. Now, I remember a funny thing happened that we would go. They see, this is before they had 670 completed. 71 wasn't all completed. 270 still up around different places. It was it was completed, but kind of spotty and iffy, and you'd have gravel roads. Believe it or not, Sawmill Road had a gravel road. Yeah, I remember it. But we'd all go up to uh, my mother and I, and I, I and my twin. We lived on Hague Avenue, earliest memories. We were very little kids. And she'd take us up High Street, or no, up Broad Street from Hague, <clears throat> back roads. She'd take us up that way. <clears throat> We'd link up to High, at Broad and High. And uh, we just cruise right on down to around, well, I can't think of the name of the road right now. I think it's uh, uh, 161. Yeah, it was 161. And we'd hit 161, and we'd shoot down Sawmill. And then as you go down there past the zoo, or around the zoo area, Powell, I think it is. Powell, Ohio. Yeah, around there, yeah. Uh, we'd make a left down there towards the zoo. And they have all these little places. And this is on the 4th of July, going to visit family. And they had all these little places where you could park along the Scioto River. There's even a police substation now that was there when I was a kid. One of them they turned into like a city building where they just, you know, do upkeep for the park. And there'd be all these... People would bring their own barbecue things, but they had them old metal ones like you saw in the state parks, made out of steel and had steel base, so people couldn't abuse them and destroy them. But people brought their own grills too. The old little Webers had the little tripod, held the little bowl for your charcoal, do your uh, chicken, your hamburger. And you know what? There'd be all kinds of people there. Joking around, laughing, throwing frisbees, throwing a ball. Kids uh, kids didn't matter. We'd be out in the water too. All of us. And we all had a great time. Over the years, they've added bicycle trails. Different things they've done. Here's the point. This past great city, I moved out long ago from it. But people don't think about when they take away your history, a lot of people say you're doomed to repeat it. I don't believe that you're able to fall for anything because you no longer have a base or a grounding. And even if something's offensive, you may not like. That at least you can have a conversation on. 
But see, nobody wants to talk anymore. Well, I'm not going to give up that right. I'm an American. All my First Amendment rights. All my second, third, fourth, ad infinitum until you get to the last one. Because those, that Bill of Rights, that's your civil rights. And it's guaranteed by that other document called the Constitution. And that's based off the Declaration of Independence, which is where we told good old King George, See ya! And there's another little trick about Ohio that a lot of people don't know. In the 1880s, they put in, you know, a, a bill to make us a state. And yeah, we're a state, right? Well, the idiots in D.C. didn't actually file it until the 50s. Did you know that? But we've always been a state, right? Yeah. So, with this current shenanigans and bullshit going on, they decided to pull the city statue of Columbus, pull it down. All right. All right. You did that. You know, there's one thing that I've seen in all my time, and mostly it's been overseas. I've seen it a lot. I've seen communism, what it actually looks like. Oh, yeah. I've seen the third and the second world. I've seen a first world nation, too. And I've also seen different nations fall. And also seen them trying to be rebuilt. Here's the issue at hand. When that Overton window swings too far to one side, if you believe in the false right-left, you know, line, you have right and left. I don't. I think it's a circle because both far right and both far left end up with massive deaths. Yeah. Just start killing people. That's what they do. French Revolution's a prime example of that. And Marx, Engels, all these little leaders that came up with Das Kapital and got all cool in the 60s. And I remember there were riots in the 60s down OSU. Matter of fact, several times. My mother's old VW Beetle heading down the road and all of a sudden one time I, I remember it distinctly a motherfucking uh, 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 CS canister bounced off her hood the front of the VW and she was pissed about that but that's a different story so all the 60's folks the boomers, as all you call them fam, I'm a Gen Xer. My son's a millennial. The thing about it is what you don't understand is that there's always a reaction to big moves. We've always been pretty centers. Center. We've had elections. Left wins, quote unquote left. You know, I don't believe in that paradigm. Right wins. And it's been the neocon and neo progressives that have always been the issue in America. Because the neo conservatives and the neo progressives, they like to get this nation into wars because they're beholden to the banks, they're beholden to other people, funders. And when I see people who get elected that nobody likes, I'll give you a prime example. He's a Democrat from Ohio. Of course, he wasn't in our district, so I never was able to vote for him, but I would have. James Trafficant. James Trafficant, if memory serves, was in Cuyahoga's district. Up towards Cleveland, if you guys didn't know that. 
And, uh, yeah, they trumped up charges on him, put him in prison. Then he ended up dying. His tractor rolled over him on his farm. That was how he died. You know, and much merriment and mirth was made on that day. But all he would do was just, he was in the same party as Bill Clinton. And he would get up there and take his time on the floor of Congress to speak truth on Clinton. Hmm. Imagine that. People on both sides used to speak truth. Not a lot of truths being spoken now on the left. If the extreme right, eh, there's no truth there either. But the left in general, lockstep from the old gray lady on down. CNN, it's been shit since Clinton. Just to tell you the truth on that. But it didn't. It didn't used to be that way. It was. It was a decent little. It, it was. It cut its teeth during the Gulf War. And uh, it was pretty factual during the first Gulf War. That was my first war in the Marine Corps. See, I left the Army, went in the Marine Corps. Fuck, I didn't touch my feet back down on Columbus except for leave. And, of course, you don't have many days on leave, so you're busy seeing your friends. You don't go look at stuff when you're home on leave. You're having fun. You're talking to family, friends. That's what you do when you come home on leave. But then when I got out in 92 and went in the Guard, National Guard for the State of Ohio, Army National Guard, 73rd Infantry Brigade, separate, the Buckeye Brigade, Ah, here's what I think. America's largest small town got way too big, way too fast. And I think it was done on purpose. Because the school I went to, we used to joke around and say we're bro-billies and hillbillies. And if we had an issue or argument, we'd go behind Frank's Nursery and Crafts right across the street, duke it out behind it, and then afterwards, we'd be drinking at rinks that night and talking about it and laughing and joking. Well, that school's not the same no more. It has a whole different temperament. But also, guess what? In high school, this probably bogged your mind, too. We had a sheriff there. Kerry Shrek. That was his name. And during hunting season, you'd have your shotgun up in your... Rack, Carrie Shrek could pull up next to you as he saw you come in and wait till you parked. And if there's a group of us, he'd come up and say the thing, same thing. He'd just have us all gather around him real quick. You come out to go, to leave, or you're coming out to your vehicle, you have one way to go, out. You don't get to go back to your car and then go back into school. That was pretty clear. Okay. And that's what we did. See, we had something called rash, rational people back then. Well, we're losing that, and we've probably lost it. But the problem with having irrational people is that those irrational people will make rational people become irrational. That's why I said... That Overton window pushed too far is going to go the opposite direction further. It's like a pendulum. It's going to happen. Now, this is just my two cents on it. But, you know, who am I? I got a picture of then, back when I left. And almost now, it's a couple year old picture. And that was me in the army, and me doing what I do for a living now. I'll just tell you this: as in Ohio. As a Buckeye.
all this bullshit that's been going on, and that's exactly what it is, is commie bullshit. It's the 60 boomers that weren't able to pull down statues because the police actually used the appropriate amount of force to stop them. And now they've swamped into our government, into our colleges, and they're ruining young people's minds and making them anti-American. Now, I've talked to many people when I was young that had anti-American type of views. But you could still talk with them and find common ground. Any of you guys that listening on the left, think about this. Why is it when you go to a, and peaceful protests are guaranteed by that First Amendment, if it's peaceful. Once it becomes riotous, it's no longer peaceful and it's no longer called a protest. It's called a riot because the mob takes over. It's no longer a rational thing. So don't get those words twisted. The point is, when you go to there, the, the protest, and somebody comes up to you, and people are telling you not to talk to them, you ever wonder why? Because they're afraid you're going to find common ground. And you're not going to vilify them and call them a Nazi, a fascist, you know. You're not going to say those things they want you to say. And it amazes me. I'm not even getting into that. All I'm going to say, Ohioans, wake up because they'll pull down statues. This is old Stasi shit. This is old East German shit on what they're doing. Uh, they've already deplatformed gone with the wind figure that one out some of the best rice and some of the best syrup now you can't have pictures on hmm it's silly shit it's just people always looking to complain now there's justifiable complaints on certain things but when you take it to the irrational that's the problem because other people might not be rational. So, that's my two cents. It's worth exactly what you paid for it. And I thank you for sitting on my big orange couch. I will slowly raise the drawbridge of Kaiser's Castle as you finish your coffee, tea, soda, or adult libation. With that being said, shuff out.